I've been down since 1995. I was 18 years old. Now I'm 42. When you're in the hole, being vulnerable by yourself, there's the only thing in there is a Bible. And I just started, you know, reading little things, you know. And I said, God, you know what, dear Lord, I think if I hang in this, you get me out through this, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be a soldier for you now. With his guidance, I think everything is possible. And um, I can't wait to that release date because I'm anxious just to go wet my feet in the beach. Coming to prison, it was a very scary feeling. You know, I lost everything, 10 years. I'm facing uh, no hope, no dreams. Everything just came crashing down. So I get to prison, and prison is supposed to be a place where you get better. So you leave a better person, but when you get to prison, it's, it turns you into a worse person than you already are. Now I'm a racist. Now I'm doing things for people I don't even know. I have to fight for a soup. We can't show any sign of weakness. You don't show any love. You always have to have this sort of demeanor where you're a tough guy and you can't show emotion. So you are constantly on your guard and you're constantly kind of looking over your shoulder but in creative arts, that all disappears. We're all brothers. We're supporting one another. We pray for one another. When they're out there in the yard, they have to put on this mask where, because it's part of prison politics, so the survival of being in prison. But when they get into that, to that room with like-minded individuals, other men who are wanting to change their lives, the mask is left at the door and the true person comes out. You see men crying. You see men um, opening themselves up to scrutiny and just really exposing themselves in a way that is, that is indescribable. Well, every person that we're encountering here has a story. And we've been peeling back some layers of that story in this very safe space. It's a very sacred space for us. We're uh, allowing them to express themselves in ways of, with movement, with music, with the written word, and with acting. And it's a beautiful thing. When these programs come to this facility, I can be that loving, that caring person, I love others. I don't have to hate people. I don't have to do anything negative. I can be myself. The way I was before I came to prison, the good me, when I was a child, the innocence. And that's what they give you. They give you that freedom. I'm locked up, but I feel this is as free I ever been in my life. I'm free. We had the Salvation Army um, Creative Arts Ensemble came up. We had a one-day event, and I'm telling you, when the gentlemen were reading their stories that they wrote, there wasn't a dry eye in the place. I mean, some of the stories that they told of how they have been redeemed and overcome these addictions and these sexual abuse as children and just, just different things. It touched your heart because to see where they came from and where they are now is just really um, inspiring. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Having your angels encamped around me, saving me from drowning in my sorrows with the consumption of alcohol and drugs. Leaving me ample time to fall into the, the bad habits, drinking drugs and not listening. I seen real close people murdered before my eyes and went through things that I never understood. The storm was extreme at times. I trusted the Lord and felt the Spirit guiding me through and through the darkness. Here I found Christ and accepted Him as my Lord and Savior. I thank you so much for saving this sinner, for bringing life to this dead man. Sincerely your son, Carlos Arias. through this transformational process and giving their lives over to Christ, you see a different individual. 
and it becomes infectious because as they're talking to other men on the yard, they're changing, they're witnessing, they're changing life, and it begins to spread. And you start to see the yard is a lot calmer. There's less incidences of violence. I know it's uh, sometimes it might sound crazy for a person to say in here, but a lot of times we, uh, along with other men, will say that, um, thank God for prison. Thank God for this place and this time. Thank God that God will give me another opportunity. Thank God that he hasn't taken his hand away from me, or thank God that his grace and his love is still there for me. So I praise God for that, and, and now I can leave from here, and I can be that person, and we can serve God for the rest of you know, my life. I didn't um, quite believe in God that, that much when I came to prison. I said, you know, if you're real, show me a sign. Show me a sign that, you know, you're out there, that you care about me, that you love me. And he sent the Salvation Army. And they came to me and said, we believe in you. I believe in you. We love you. You're going to make it out there. And that was God telling me that. And that was that sign I was looking for. If this video impacted you, like it and share it. We are always posting content, so don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for helping us share change.